and met her on uh, numerous occasions and have many happy memories of those meetings. Uh, not least, uh, I had the privilege of staying with her. I mean, that's something that most bishops get to do. And we were there both as a guest, um, alongside other guests, but also we were there for a purpose, or, or almost like the chaplain to the weekend. What I learned through staying with her, well, one, she's very good company. You know, we, we actually had a bit of a hoot. You know, it was a, it was a thoroughly enjoyable week. I was, couldn't be more nervous turning up. Uh, and yet by, by Sunday evening, and when all the other guests had gone home, but the bishop always stayed on, after dinner, there's me and the Queen doing a jigsaw and watching the telly. And so it, it couldn't have been more ordinary in a way. This feels like a weird thing to say, because on the one hand, her life is unimaginably different to everybody else's life. And yet within it, because she, as I saw it, lived her life as a vocation, a calling, I suppose, can I put it this way? She took her role as queen very seriously, but she didn't take herself too seriously. And therefore she inhabited the role with an ease and a simplicity. Uh, and I think that enabled her to have a long, happy and glorious reign, uh, to be at ease with people and to put people at their ease. Uh, and, and to recognize, you know, it, it is an accident of birth that you end up as monarch, but it's not an accident what you do with it. That's a decision. And she clearly, from a very young age, made that decision that for me, this will be a life of service. That's why we love her. That's why her example is one we can all follow. That's why she has been a blessing to our nation. Um, and indeed, I do pray. It's, it's in the prayers the Church of England is offering today that we may follow her example.